Hello, I'm John Kenalopoulos, an eye surgeon based in Athens, Greece, and New York City, New York, clinical professor of ophthalmology at NYU Medical School. It is my pleasure to present to you our signature technique, the Athens Protocol. I hope you find this presentation interesting, and I thank you very much for your attention. This is the Athens Protocol in a review. PTK, topo guided PRK, myomycin C, and cross linking here is a slide showing that. Um, UV absorption is done by Bowman's membrane as well. And this is the PTK treatment plan, 50 microns, 6.5 millimeter diameter, and this is the topography-guided partial PRK. Please note here that we have centrally a partial myopic PRK and peripherally a partial hyperopic PRK. We're ready to start the PTK. You can see the mode up on your right, and uh, the EX500 eczema laser is extremely fast in uh, removing the epithelium. We do this in order to use the epithelium as a mask for the potential regularity of the uh, stromal bed um, after the epithelium is removed. So PTK first, then we're going to go on to the uh, topography guided partial PRK. We make sure the bed is equally hydrated. You can see on the top right the topography guided PRK again, a combination myopic and hyperopic treatment seen here with the EX500 eczema laser. We're using topographies from the Vario, which is the new wave light uh, placebo disc um, uh, topographer that also includes uh, iris, centroid shift data, and uh, cycle rotation data. Here, my myosin C 0.02 milligrams per ml for 30 seconds. Uh, despite of the cross-linking that will continue, we still uh, feel and have experienced that myomycin C helps with some scarring that can be noted in these patients. So full 30 seconds of myomycin C, uh, we will then rinse vigorously with chilled BSS in order to remove the excess and um, make sure that there is some cooling of the cornea. And this is the BSS that will be followed by 0.1% uh, riboflavin, uh, sodium phosphate seen here. We, for years, have introduced this uh, dilution riboflavin and not the dextran. This is slightly hypotonic, 340 milliosmoles, and we uh, pre-treat just for five minutes. Um, so we sway away from the um, Dresden protocol. Five minutes of pre-treatment with 0.1%. Um, riboflavin sodium phosphate and then move over uh, to use as you can see here a few more drops of the riboflavin the um, Avidro KXL device uh, which will fit right between uh, the two lasers of the refractive suite and uh, this is a highly customized tool it can provide fluence from 3 milliwatts all the way up to 45 milliwatts for the Athens protocol we use uh, a standard of 10 milliwatts for 10 minutes. And this is the device. It's relatively easy to use. 10 milliwatts for 10 minutes. Um, we use riboflavin drops every one minute for this uh, 10 minute duration. And um, uh, here you can see the uh, comparative results of uh, doing cross linking first and laser later to the combine. And here topometric images before and after. You can see the dramatic improvement, almost normalization of these corneas. Some cells want like healing issues the first few weeks in some patients. As you can see here, they require vigorous lubrication. And again here, the key element is before on the left, after on the right, and the dramatic improvement in the index of height decentration on all of these examples. You will see examples, uh, for instance, uh, here where the uh, irregularity is normalized, but myopia is induced. And again, the key element here is not refractive error, but improvement, as you can see here, of best corrected visual acuity, great safety on the results so far, and again here, a 15-year-old before and after with excellent result. So in conclusion, we see a very predictable best spectral corrected improvement, although there might be some myopia. So we looked here uh, retrospectively, a very large group of patients, 231 keratoconic cases treated with a signature protocol topography guided normalization and uh, high fluence accelerated uh, cross-linking. And the data, as you can see here, are very impressive. The um, uncorrected visual acuity uh, improved uh, uh, to uh, plus 0.36 decimal, uh, and the corrected visual acuity by 0 0.2 um, uh, decimal points in uh, uh, 
the average of these patients. Postoperatively, the flat mer meridian uh, was an aver average of 46.56, uh, um, and at one month, 44.44. Um, the index of surface variance, which we have repeatedly reported as one of the most sensitive indices in normalization of the cornea, uh, was an average 98.46 um, uh, preoperatively and improved at three years to an average of 76.80, the index of height decentration, an even more sensitive uh, indicator of normalization of the cornea, uh, improved from an average of 0 0.091 preoperative to the three year of 0 0.04, so more uh, than half of the original improvement. Um, the expected changes in cornea thickness, and in general, um, we're seeing here long-term data of stability with these cases. Um, we're gonna go to some more specific graphs here. Uh, this is a lot of data and very long-term uh, follow-up, as you can see. We have not seen in the literature such long-term follow-up on these cases. Uh, we're looking here at the uncorrected and corrected visual acuity. Here we're seeing the graphs. Uh, we're gonna see first uh, the graph of uh, a gain of visual acuity, uh, corrected and then uncorrected. And here the stability of keratometry uh, and the anterior surface regularity uh, indices and how uh, they kind of level off after the first six months. Uh, here the uh, cornea thickness. Obviously these corneas are thinned but remain stable. Um, they're thinned by the uh, topo-guided uh, therapeutic uh, procedure. And here we're going to see how the individual indices um, uh, improve the K1, K2, uh, the index of surface variance and index of height concentration. So in a few words here, uh, we're seeing that uh, the Athens protocol, topography guided, PRK normalization of the surface of keratoconus and High fluence collagen cross-linking or accelerated cross-linking have a tremendous impact on mainly uncorrected visual acuity, more than three decimal uh, improvement in acuity, corrected visual acuity, more than two decimals, and from the parameters that we're still seeing here on this table, dramatic improvement of the IHD, the lower parameter, that's stable from 1-1 one, one, and improves a little bit with time but not so much, and also index of surface variance that uh, starts to improve from month one and keeps improving uh, with slight uh, uh, curve improvement up until 36 months. These data appear to be collectively stable at three years, and this is a very large group of patients. I hope you found this presentation interesting. This is John Canalopoulos signing out. Thank you.